I am live. I'm a little early. <laughs> I'm just hopping on here to make sure we have sound this week. I'm in the right place this week that you all can see me. And everything is a-okay. So you'll have to tell me. I've got all kinds of things hooked up to me today. I'm <laughs> trying to feel a little more prepared than last week. We'll see how this goes. Just checking over here to make sure we're all good. See if you all are on and joining me yet. Here we are. There's my face. <laughs> okay, let me pull you up on the iPad right here. Okay, how is the sound? Am I good? Looks and sounds great. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Uh, I just hit the mad face all by myself with my <laughs> finger over here. Um, okay, let's go back. I want to see who's here. We've got Debbie and Diana is here and Linda. Hello, Rhonda. Anita is here. Suzanne, Kimberly. Uh, Reek? Reek? R-I-E-K. Welcome. Uh, Anki? Cora, Andrea, Ellie, Teresa, Els is here. Okay. All right. I'm doing it on the uh, stream deck today because I have to go eventually when I do the demo, I've got to go over there and die cut something. And I didn't want to leave you just staring at the corner of my craft room. So we're going to try this. Uh, yes. Thank you about the hair. I had to pull it up today. It's been a busy couple days. <laughs> <laughs> hi Becky, hi Rebecca, Tracy is here, Femke is here, uh, Mary is here from Wicked Papers, hi Belinda, thank you, yes, Create and Craft yesterday, we're going to talk about that for sure, uh, it was a lot of fun, ooh, the nerves, but it, it worked out great, and I have to say, uh, all the presenters are great on Create and Craft, I've been watching them all week in preparation for me, and um, uh, I don't know. I, it was just like Nigel just put me at ease. And, and I thought I was going to have Paula, who's wonderful too, but uh, it ended up being Nigel and, and he's just so awesome. And he made me so comfortable and he asked so many questions and it was really, really nice. Danielle is here. Elsie's here. Janice, hello. Thank you. I, I'm so happy you love the new line. We're going to show that here in a minute. Uh, Christine is here. Yes, like, comment, and share. You know what, uh, Anya, you're going to have to post who the winner is because I didn't get that from you. Today's Monday, right? So we announced the winner. Uh, let's see. I'm looking to see. Oh, today's winner is George Rhonda Toll. I just read that. Anya just popped it on there. So awesome. Congrats. Just won the gift certificate for $50. So that's great. Um, so continue to like, comment, and share all week, and then you can be in the drawing for next Monday. Diana is here. Susan Weber is watching. Uh, Honora is here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun doing Create and Craft. So I'm going to change the camera. I'm going to try to keep an eye on your comments, and uh, I'm going to show you my new collection. If you're not sick of seeing it already, I'm going to show it again very quickly. But mainly I want to share a lot of samples. Some of them you saw last week. If you happened to catch me when I made the mix up uh, on the wrong page. Um, and of course I showed a bunch on Crete and Craft yesterday. So uh, hopefully you're not tired of it. I'll go a little quicker. And let's go to the phone cam. Uh, what did we say about Nigel? I was just looking. Nigel was like a talk show host. <clears throat> he certainly was. Nigel just acts like I, he is genuinely into crafting and understands everything about it. And it's <laughs> just so amazing. Uh, so much enthusiasm. He made me feel like a rock star, let me tell you. Good morning, Maggie. Hello, Wilma. Mary, hi from York, Maine. Darlene is here. Uh, Cindy is here. Yes, yeah, so good. Yona, you're not sick of it? Okay, good. That's good to hear. I'm going to take a quick sip of water and we'll launch right in. <clears throat> All right. Sue Walker's here. Yvonne is here. Haven't seen it yet. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. 
All right, so I'll just go through it very quickly. There are 10 dies and three stamp sets, which this is a very big release, as I'm told. I just kind of got carried away and was having a, a bunch of fun, and that's how it came out. So we have, of course, bees, because you know me. I love my bees. And check out this, uh, this watch band here. That's my favorite one. I've had that a while. Hello, Judy. Sharon Hodges is here. Karen Kirkman is here. Karen Galena, Susanna, Jean. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so bees. We've got to talk about bees, of course. I had to have bees in my first release, of course. And uh, the release itself for this particular one is called Everything's Blooming. And you will always see on any packaging of the releases that I do, the Everyday Elements little tagline here. And that's just to tell you, kind of like I told Nigel yesterday uh, in Create and Craft, that that's my idea behind anything that I design, is that these can be used as everyday elements throughout the year. So even though some will have a little bit of a maybe seasonal feel, there won't be really hard and strong themes to what I design so that they really can be used all the time. Uh, there's Belinda and Rolly Spens, Karen St. Francis, hello, Wendy, Nancy, Crystal, welcome. Okay, so back to the bees. Of course, this one is our layered honeybee, just like you see there. You get all these beautiful pieces and parts, and I'll show you all kinds of wonderful samples on different options that you have to work with that one. We have large doilies, which are probably a, a good four inches wide, and the center hole will cut out. Uh, certainly can pop the center back in if you want a whole doily, but that's the plan there. We have fancy flourishes, these are beautiful as backgrounds. Um, if you joined me on the wrong page last week, <laughs> we did the Facebook Live and I did this sort of background treatment to a card and that uses the fancy flourishes back there as sort of a background element. So that was kind of fun. And then we have our stemmed flowers. So you have four beautiful stem flowers, which we're going to work with today in my demo. We have postage stamps, which have all these great photo mats for each size of the four different sizes of postage stamps. I'll show you some tricks with that too today. Uh, this posted note is here because in the Create and Craft, we had two bundles offered and I wanted to make sure to keep those separated when talking to Nigel. Uh, so we have the layered birds super super fun just like the layered bee you have all these options for wings and interchanging some of the wings if you like uh, positioning them differently very fun set and then the playful flowers now this is a really loaded set look at all these dies that come in this one so much fun to layer to not to layer to triple quadruple layer whatever you want to do i mean there's just so many possibilities with this one so fun and then we have Everyday Words, which I was really wanting to produce. So I'm so glad these came out. And we have all of the words that you would see mainly on a lot of card making, but they could be on planner pages, um, scrapbook layouts, whatever. Uh, but yes, all the common phrases that you see in everyday card making. And so we have the actual word and, of course, the shadow as an option. And I'll show you samples where we use it, and sometimes we don't. All right, let me look at some comments here. Linda is watching. Uh, Mary ordered four die sets today. Wow, Mary, thank you. And the birds and flowers are beautiful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and then we have the lace borders. There's four nice long borders there. And somebody asked me in the last live, will this fit down a planner page? And the answer I said immediately was, oh, yes. But, you know, I'm thinking you can use it for sure because you can continue it and make it longer. But the measurement from end to end is about seven and just a little over seven and a quarter. So, of course, the large size planner page is taller than that. But the sidekick, that would work in. Uh, so you would just die cut it twice and then extend it. 
Uh, Sylvia is here on my to-do list. Okay, awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see what Sylvia does. And Anne is here. She's tardy. She said she needs a tardy pass, please. Well, you're always welcome, Anne. Don't worry about that. Um, okay, so then the last one in the dies is the small doilies. As you can see there, there are three small doilies, but then we have three nested circles that you can either layer up on top of the actual doily or you can cut out. Uh, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of options there. Okay, stamp sets. Let's see. Linda loves them. Thank you. Jackie Jasper's here. She's used the lace borders to make grass today. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm just loving having a design team. It's just surreal to me and to see the amazing things that people are making. It's been so, it's just a pure joy. I mean, it's, I don't know. I'm in my happy place right now. <laughs> Let me just say that. Okay, our first stamp set, let's do this in order is Bloom, which we're going to use today in the demo, so I'll show you that. And I just uh, just uploaded my week 13 video, and I used some of this in that video too. So we have all kinds of great little accent uh, banners and things to go across or below things. Um, we have this beautiful leaf stamp, which we're going to use today, Bloom, Blossom, Grow. And also, when you're using these circles from the small doilies, remember that each of the dies... I mean stamps, has some sort of circle element in it, and they are sized to fit those circles over there. So it works together. Thank you, Mary. Yes, I, I'm, I am proud of my release, I have to say. Um, okay, and then we also have a rectangle shape in each of the dice or stamp sets, as you can see right here, one, two, three. They're all the same size, and I will show you that in the postage stamp die, let me grab that one again. It's kind of handy to remember this because you won't have to cut your own rectangle like by hand and size it each time you use one of those rectangular stamps because if you go to your postage stamp die and you pick up that smaller inset one, that is exactly the right size for stamping all those three different um, rectangular stamps. So no need to resize and rethink. And you, there you go. It's perfect. Uh, thank you, Belinda. Thank you. I know I tried. I tried to really think it through. There's some things that, you know, after the fact, I kind of wished I had done differently. But that's how you learn. It's my first release. Um, so thank you. Okay, so that was Bloom. We're going to use that today. And here is Happy. So again, with the rectangle and the circle element. And then we have the definition of the word happy, uh, which for some reason really uh, kind of... Uh, <laughs> Nigel just loved that yesterday. He was kind of cracking me up. He was great. We have this beautiful fern stamp that some of you have seen in my planner. The word happy, a cute little ladybug, and this pretty leaf kind of stem. And then these different phrases, which I'll show you in the samples. Great different ways to use those. And then we have the honeybee, of course. Had to do it in the stamps, too. So we have this big, beautiful, natural honey. Uh, this is one stamp right here. It's just great. I'll show you samples. Spring has sprung. We've got our little honeycomb here. Uh, best organic honey label. A couple of different size bees even. So this, this, and this bee are all three different sizes. You could fussy cut around this one after you stamp it. And then you have two more sizes, which definitely was something that I wanted to make sure that I did. Uh, Kathy says, I like that you've been wearing a flower shirt to match your line. Yeah, that's funny that you picked up on that because I have been doing that the last three times I've been on air. So not by accident, on purpose. Uh, lastly, we have gratitude journal down here, and I will show you a little gratitude journal that I made. So let's grab some samples and take a look. Femka, I'm glad you like the bees set. Thank you. Yes, I love the bees so much too. Everybody loves bees, right? Okay, so you may have seen these already. Uh, let's see, am I in frame? Yeah, looks good. Uh, so Karen Gerber did this wonderful free class on Facebook. And of course, Karen Gerber, as we know, is a beautiful um, designer with Elizabeth Crafts. She's on 
several teams and one of them is mine now so I'm super lucky but works with Anita's flower dyes and did a free class on Facebook gosh last month I think and so I took the class and made the flowers and then um, the flowers were just sitting there so I thought well I'm going to put them on something so I went ahead and used Yosette's die with the frame uh, we call that the shadow box frame I keep calling it the frame die but it is the shadow box and I put in some elements from my collection. So, of course, we have the bee. And as you can see, very simply, just cut out a pattern paper. No layers, no elements, no face, no wings, just, just the die. Beautiful. We have the honeycomb back there, and we have happy, of course, with the shadow in the background, and a couple of the little flowers. And it's done, right? Same thing with our layered, but not layered, uh, bird here same way pattern paper there's the large doily there with the circle popped right back in and then the word love with the shadow and then finally we have this one with the fancy flourishes I if you can tell I overlapped a few flourishes in there that I cut out of the beautiful Bella Rose paper by Esther uh, just kind of overlap them back there as a background element behind these beautiful flowers and then the word grateful okay I have to say, when I was doing that live uh, Create and Craft yesterday, I <laughs> I had stuff, you just don't know, <laughs> it's like stuff all over the floor. I was chucking stuff left and right, just trying to hurry through. Uh, it, was, it was wild and wooly, but it was super fun. Okay, let's see, what do I have here? I have some, uh, I want to show bees, but I'm going to show a few bird things first, since that's what I grabbed. Uh, this is a cute, sweet little tag from Gloria Stengel, who's on the design team. She used a Graphic 45 tag, and she did the cute little bird. She puts a little face on, and she used some different wings here, and then the stem flowers she's used, the playful flowers she's used, the For You. She's really kind of combined mostly everything in this one small tag, you know? Perfect. And that's how I mean, everything goes together, right? Ah, Els is given a little sneaky peeky uh, comment there. You see that? Not too long before we have a new floral collection as well. And yes, I've seen a little bit of it. Actually, I have it, but I haven't had time to play with it. And it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be a really good mix with what we have going here. Okay, so birds, more birds. Uh, we have our Blossom, Bloom, and Grow big 5x7 card here with both of those birds. As you can see, they face different ways, so that's great. Um, any card kits, Teresa? I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, coming down the pike, you mean? Well, that might be a question for Els. We'll see. So here are the stemmed flower, uh, stemmed florals, yes, and the two birds. And then the small doily I just cut into quarters and used as a corner element here. And of course, blossom, bloom, and grow are stamps, stamped in black. And then I just colored them in very carefully with a white um, Signo pen. Uh, let's see, one more bird. We have this one, and this one just want, I just wanted to show on a slimline card, and there's some stamping inside with the rules and my stamps. I uh, just wanted to show that by just changing the colors of what you die cut, of course, as we know, you can give it a whole different feel. So whereas this one is very colorful and bright for spring, this one would be great for a fall card. You know, Thanksgiving, grateful. Uh, any more birds? I just want to make sure. I'm looking around back here behind me. Uh, there might be. We'll get to it. Oh, there's one right there. Well, I might as well show this whole one because it's kind of a set and it's a class. And then we'll get back to those guys over there because those are more about postage stamps. So one more bird in here. Thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you're loving the release. The men's card, yes, would be great for Father's Day. I'll make sure to show that. Uh, new florals, says Penny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you got to keep up with this company, I'll tell you. So this is going to be a little class down in Florida at a, a store in Merritt Island called Wicked Papers. So we're doing a four-card set and a little notebook here. 
So the word notes, of course, uh, is from the everyday words. And all of these cards have the everyday words on them, of course. But there's that bird, nice and close up with pattern paper to cut out all his layers. And then the just for you. And there's one of the lace borders. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the bee in a minute, but there's that bee all layered up with the same kind of pattern paper. And hello, friend, and another lace border there. This one shows the postage stamp kind of collaged on there. And then the word thanks, and of course, our fancy flourish. And then this one has the large postage stamp just cut out like a frame and the large doily and the stemmed flower and the happy birthday with no shadow. So you can do it either way for sure, shadow or no shadow, and it works just fine. Okay, so let's go with little postage stamp stuff, which you saw a little bit already. So these are all by Gloria Stengel on the design team. She has made this beautiful, very layered up, gorgeous card here, this thanks card with cheesecloth and the frame back there and she's done the you know the nested rectangles on there the word thanks and then the fancy flourish just beautiful and as i'm looking she has stamped on this background paper with the best organic honey there and there's the bee i didn't even notice that yesterday and of course the famous masculine card everybody likes here with the postage stamp back there the double layered mat and then she's popped everything up she's got thinking of you here and she has very subtly used one of the borders in the lace borders but as you can see it works on a mail card as well and she's added it here on inside as well and then use the negative down at the bottom which i think is just so clever i love it and then finally this pretty happy birthday card where she's done some watercoloring with the stemmed flowers and happy birthday with no shadow looks great and over here a bright pink lace border and on the inside she's just decorated very pretty with pattern paper okay i gotta take a breath look at comments oh thank you vicky yes the paper she's used is beautiful uh, thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you think everything is beautiful. And Mary said, uh, beautiful. Can't wait for the class. Uh, me either, Mary. I'm looking forward to it. That's in May. That thanks card with the flowers, some of my favorites. I'll have to replicate that one, says Sue. Awesome. How nice. All right, what do we got over here? We need more bee stuff. I got so many samples. I got to make sure I leave time for the, the demo. Okay, so let's talk about this box. Christine Woods is also on my design team, uh, a fellow Graphic 45 designer. Uh, she has created this great little gift box using some Graphic 45 papers with all the bees on it, of course. And she's layered up the bee with some vellum wings here, which I think is super sweet. Uh, the honeycomb, the large doily, and the small doily, the circle with the stamp in there. Uh, this just is to show you that you can layer up the two different size doilies and it's just beautiful. And then of course she's got all those lace borders going on there. Really pretty. Uh, more bees, more bees, more bees. Last week, if you joined me in the wrong place, <laughs> uh, I demoed this one and, uh, I already had this one made just to show the two different colors and different feels that you can get with using different papers um, and different wording on the cards. These are five by seven cards uh, on this one. And, and you can go back and watch it as long as you go to the Elizabeth Craft Designs family page and you do have to be a member. So just request to join if you haven't seen it. I take you through making this entire thing and my little vellum wings and all the things that I did in the background here with stenciling, making a stencil from that honeycomb die and then um, using the flowers and shaping them and the doily did some stamping back there with the honeycomb stamp. So if you haven't seen that one, check it out. It's, I do apologize for that mishap. We had a little sound issue. Uh, this one is also by Gloria. She's done some beautiful things here, I tell you. She's used the large doily. She's used pretty paper from Graphic 45. And as you can see, she's layered up the bee a bit, but not with all the layers, like some of those samples I've just shown you. 
Um, so, I mean, you always have that option to stop before you just layer everything and just go with pretty pattern paper and it's gorgeous. She's got some cheesecloth back there, the large doily, the honeycomb, more, um, the word hello, some twine, just beautiful. And then she stamped on the inside, of course, with the bee stamps. So pretty. And here is the bee. Uh, this one I made using, remember when we looked at the frame and the B was cut out of just pattern paper? That was this piece right here. And I just laid it aside. You know, sometimes you're almost like, oh, I should just throw that away. No, no, no. I made a new card with it just using the negative. So I layered some of Esther's pretty paper back there. Uh, so where is this wrong place? Uh, the wrong place was the Elizabeth Craft Designs family page. So if you're not a member, just request to join and you'll get admitted in pretty quickly. Uh, I have layered uh, Esther's pretty paper back there just to show through the hole where the bee was cut. And then, of course, we got our honeycomb. Grateful for you. And I have double layered the um, lace border here with two different colors and just kind of offset it a little bit like a drop shadow. Super easy and fun. Uh, this I demoed yesterday, so there's the one sample and then the actual demo, so they look a little different, but this was on Create and Craft yesterday, so I whipped this together really fast. Let me tell you, <laughs> TV, that makes you go fast. So that was very fun. There's all kinds of stuff happening on this tag with stamping and layering, and there's that frame cut out just as a frame as opposed to the straight, flat postage stamp. Uh, lots of my stamps, of course, in the background. Super fun. Let's see. And we're going to get to that. That's stamping. Okay. Let's talk about more bee stuff. Here is the gratitude journal. I made a small one for elves. If you caught her, gosh, was that a week ago, Monday doing the live? Yes. Um, I made a small one for elves, an actual stitched book. Uh, but so I wanted to make myself another one, but maybe not exactly the same. So I just grabbed some computer paper, some nice thick printer paper, and I put it in here with a three pamphlet stitch and made a pretty cover. And this is the stamp of the bee, of course, with that uh, florally kind of leafy rectangle there. And then, of course, these are the mats with the large postage frame, which is back there. The large doily which looks like a big oval now because I cut it in half and spread it out to get it to show top and bottom here. So now I have my own little gratitude journal. And of course, when I cut out this postage uh, piece here, I had the negative left over. So I just popped it onto a rectangle and then stamped this out, did a little stamping around the outside edge and made just another sweet card. So you never want to let anything go to waste, right? Okay, so now we have, let's talk fancy, uh, let's see, what do we call these? Playful flowers and stemmed flowers. So you saw, you saw a lot of sneak peeks of those in there before. Uh, here are several samples. So the stemmed flowers we're going to work with today. So I want to show you those first. This is what I did very quickly on Create and Craft yesterday. And I have to tell you a little behind the scenes funny about this because... I had two what I thought were very long demos for the show, and I really thought that was going to be fine. Els did say, maybe have a little extra just in case, and I kind of had some things laying around, but I didn't really have a plan. <laughs> and sure enough, Nigel said, okay, let's see one more demo. We're going to give Annette time to reset and get ready, and I just started to scramble. <laughs> I was in a panic. Uh, I don't think it showed. I haven't watched it back yet, but I think it was fine. Uh, but I did make this very quickly. So I showed how to color the stems with alcohol markers. And I had some of these pieces laying around, luckily. So it worked out, but that was just a little funny to share with you. Uh, more stemmed flowers. These are watercolored. And there's, of course, our fancy flourishes in the background. And these are tucked inside of this sweet little envelope. And there's the postage stamp there. So those were fun. And we have this one. Uses a lot of Esther's paper. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. That's good to hear. Um, 
again watercolored with the floral the stemmed flowers and hello friend and these are esther's papers i've just kind of layered up here and you can also see the postage stamp in the background there okay playful flowers you saw a couple samples but over there and then i have this one here that i made a little happy birthday five by seven actually this one's more like four and a half by six and a half i think and I'm talking inches, of course. Yep, four and a half by six and a half. So I have the large doily layered up here. And of course, no center this time. So I popped it up and then there's pattern paper behind it. And then um, just layered up those playful flowers. Just super fun to play around with different layering and colors. Of course, we have happy birthday and the lace border over here. Super fun. Didn't notice any panic, Yona? Okay, that is really good to hear. <laughs> when it comes to those stemmed flowers, uh, I mentioned in Create and Craft yesterday that a lot of people see those kind of dies, you know, they die cut it out of uh, blank and they kind of panic, like, how do I color this? I don't feel good with watercolors or I'm not good with alcohol markers. Uh, so you don't always have to do that, of course. You, you can always do the very simple, clean version. And I tell you, Jackie Jasper is the designer to watch there because her stuff is clean, simple, neat, uh, just so nice. And, and this reminds me of Jackie's style here. And all I've done is picked a card. This is actually soft finish white. Uh, cut it out in the same size for each card. Uh, stitched around the outside edges with some black thread. You don't have to do that. You can definitely use a thin line pen and a ruler if you'd like. Uh, washed a little watercolor on there and then you would think that I die cut right through that to show the black card through, but no, I just die cut all those stemmed flowers with black and pop them right on there. So, so simple. And then all these word strips are from uh, one of the stamp sets. Let's see. And I wanted to show you because I did kind of mask off. So Joyful Moments is the actual stamp. But then I just sort of masked off the word moments when I was inking up the stamp and just stamped Joyful there and just put them right across the top. So it can be as simple as that and still really very classy and nice. Uh, of course, I had to make some thank you cards for myself because I'm always needing some and I always wished I had something custom with a B on it. So um, I'm looking at Femke's comment. You can later layer in color if you don't mind cutting it. That's right. That's right. Uh, so anyway, I made some thank you cards. I made myself a little set, but this would be such a great gift, right? Very simple, classic note card set as a gift. I stamped the rules in there so I can write nice and straight. I got a B in there. And then this is all I have on the front of each one. So super easy, super clean. Okay. And then we got some little, this is almost like reaching out and doing a little art journaling, but on tags for me, uh, all these background techniques would be great in an art journal, I think. And I just used distress inks, you know, oxides and water and dipped and dabbed and had a great time, but it really showcases the stamps here. So the pennant banner, of course, is a stamp that I fussy cut the word bloom and the bee. You can see in the background, there's some honeycomb where I didn't even mount that stamp to a block. I just picked it up and dabbed it around on the tag. There's water drops everywhere. We've got organic honey stamp there. Even the stemmed flower here, I, I stamped first with that happy definition before I die cut it and, and then colored it. Super fun. And then we've got our little rectangle back there with our stamped pretty rectangular leafy border. And then this one is a blossom tag. Dipped and dabbed. <laughs> Penny likes that. Yes. Uh, what was that word that uh, Nigel used yesterday? Snipability. We were talking about how you can snip things apart and use them in different places. And he said, it's so great they have that snipability. I just thought that was hilarious. So cute. Uh, my blossom tag has been stamped and colored in and then I fussy cut around it. But there you see that circle with that like laurel wreath going around from one of the stamp sets and then nested in the other circle size from the small doilies. There's our sweet little 
ladybug, which I simply stamped in black and then I stamped it again in red and then I cut out the red part to layer on top. Love how you have stamped words on the flower die. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, really, it's like making your own pattern paper. It's kind of fun. I like to do that. Uh, of course, we have all these leafy kind of stamps in the background. I've added a little bit of those, uh, what is it like, these little dots of paint with the shimmer to them just to kind of dress that up. So super fun. And then my happy tag with my bee and the small doily and the fern. And there's even that honeycomb back there that I simply stamped into all these inks with water to kind of lift it away. It's kind of a nice technique. And then happy definition again and this little border stamp across the bottom. So, so fun. So fun. Okay, I need a drink. She said the word skiwif too. Don't know how to spell it. Yeah, what was uh yeah, what was that word he said? Skew not skew. Skiwif? I don't know. He was funny. Okay, I think we're ready for demo time. I did want to show just very quickly. What time is it? Oh, 2.34. Yeah, we got to get cracking. Um, thank you, Jeannie. You love the bees. So, so fun. Thank you. Can you guys hear the, the lawn guy out there? Isn't that great? Timing couldn't have been perfect, more perfect. So this is my weekly planner. And if you've been following me for a while, you know I've been doing a weekly page, just like a lot of you are doing in my planner just one day is our one page is a week and around week eight i started to sneak in a little sneak peeks of my either dies or stamps or both in these pages so i will just flip through these pretty quickly here uh, i'm looking to wonky and cattywampus can't spell that either <laughs> Thank you, Darlene. I'm so happy you like the collection. Uh, so yeah, I sneak, I snuck in the postage stamp here when I did this page on week eight. And of course the small doily behind our craft lover from Esther. And then week nine, I teased you with the stamp of the fern in the background and my simple life from the stamp set. Spring has sprung was a little sneak peek on week 10. Week 11, I use the happy definition in the backs of my circles. And there's a little bit of one of those circle leafy uh, laurel wreath kind of deals. And then week 12, I teased you with fancy flourishes. And somebody said they thought this looked like a mustache, as Nigel called it, a mustache. And then special memory is also from one of the stamp sets. And then I just did this this morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I've been a busy girl. Week 13, now I can finally show, you know, so much more and talk about it now that it's officially released. Uh, I did some stamping back here. Of course, the B, these little guys here. The lines are from the stamp set for the journaling to be nice and straight. So, um, and of course, I used the, the die from Esther to make the cute little easel board and... Uh, picture that my husband took of me while I was doing the live on Create and Craft. Thanks, Els. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Whew. Let's do a demo. Let's make a card. I want to show you a little technique with the postage stamps to make like a little window. So I'm going to take a second to get set up and I'll take a look at your comments while I'm doing that. We're going to do something like this card, maybe a little bit different colors for the florals. Uh, thank you, Karen. Beautiful use of the easel, she says. Thank you. My hair is wonderful in that photo. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie um, wrote to me and said, Slay, you look so good. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair looks so good. <laughs> well, you know, it's going to be on TV, so I had to work hard on the hair yesterday. Today, not so much. Nice hubby. Yes, Femka, my hubby is very nice. He actually fibbed to me and told me that he was going to go out and do something and watch it on the replay. And I found out later that he didn't on purpose. He said that because he didn't want me to be nervous thinking he was sitting in the other room watching me. Isn't that sweet? 
Thank you, Jean. I'm glad you like my journal pages. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make this card. And I got all my pieces and parts ready. I got measurements for you guys today. I've got my steps so I get it right. And I got everything pre-cut and ready to go. So in order to get this effect where it's really, can you see that dimension, how we can kind of see in there a double layer like that? Um, so to achieve that, it's easier than you might think. Okay, so what we're going to do, first we'll start off with some measurements. Okay, this piece of paper, you can use any paper, of course. This is what I'm going to use back here behind. So this paper, here are your measurements here, uh, three and three quarter inch by five inches, or I actually got a great ruler now, 95 millimeter by 127 for this size. And that just goes behind there. So it can... You know, that doesn't have to be hard and fast on that size, but that's what's going to work without having any error back there. The piece that we will die cut right here for the postage stamp is four and a half by six and a half inches or 115 millimeter by 165. I hope I'm getting these right. I mean, I just laid my ruler on there. Oh, that can't be wrong, right? Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Patricia. I get these tomorrow so I can look to make it later. Okay, awesome. Uh, this is the background brown back here that we are going to die cut as well. This piece is four and three quarters by six and three quarter inches or, and you guys tell me, okay, 12 centimeters by 17 plus two more millimeters. So do we say, would you just say 172 millimeters? I don't know. Or do we say 17 and two? <laughs> you guys tell me. Okay, and of course my card base is a 5x7 or a 126 millimeter by 178 millimeter card. 5x7 is pretty common here in the States. I don't know if it is everywhere else. That's why I wrote that there. Uh, looks lovely, says Suzanne. Thank you. Okay, and this stuff is just for the inside. So we will take care of that later. I'll put that aside for now. And so I'm going to put you on a little brief hold. You're going to hear me over there at the die cutter in a minute. But what we want to do here, I can get rid of my sizes now, is first we want to take our pattern paper, which of course we recognize this, right, from Warren Wood Paper Collection. And I am going to use the largest postage stamp die. And I know it, it might shift a little when I go over there to die cut it, so I'm just going to use some removable tape. But as you can see here, I'm going to try to get this toward the upper part up here so that this, this, and this are about equal in spacing. Okay. So thankfully I remember I have to undo my microphone and I'll come back and hook it back up. So I'm going to put you on a little be right back. Okay, and hopefully you can still hear me good. We'll go back to the phone here. Okay. Okay, and so we have that cut away. I'm going to save that tape for this next step. Thank you. Thank you, Anki. I think I'm so happy you like the card. So we have that done, and then I'm going to reach over here and get that next size down for that large postage stamp. And that's going to be our brown. So I'm going to lay this right behind here to get the proper positioning. And it should be about an eighth of an inch if we're working in inches all the way around. And then that helps us to find the center where we need it. Oops. Take your time. I'm going to tape that and then get that out of the way up there. Okay. And then I don't want that to shift, so I'm holding tight. 
Okay. All right. Be right back again. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Okay, this is working out well, right? And I'll hook my mic back up since I don't have to go anywhere anymore. Uh, let's see. Um, will these be available soon? Actually, yes. And I think that um, Tracy is answering that. Stores are either getting them like today or have already had them. So just check with your local scrapbook store i know that scrapbook.com i don't know if they have it yet or not they're going to have it but check with your local stores we always want to support our local stores first um to make sure that we have stores that stay in business for us right we want to support them so there we go that was super super simple and then of course we're going to pop everything up but before we do that we want to do all the stamping that we want to do here so let me tuck this away. Thank you, Lois. I'm so happy. Looking forward to our local store getting it. Yeah, if your store doesn't have it, of course you need to ask for it, right? And maybe they'll get it in for you. So I'm going to put a little paper back here because I'm going to do some stamping off the edges. And so I have grabbed things from the Bloom stamp set here. Uh, let's see. Brilliant to do it in reverse. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's the only way I knew to get that to work out, Tracy. I, I don't know any other way. So um, Michelle McCosh is there and she says, we're shipping from Florida. Definitely you can order from them online and support Michelle's store. Everything, scrapbooks and stamps down there in Florida. So I am going to grab this great little leaf stamp. Check our time, we're doing good. And I've just got like a medium green ink going here. And I'm just going to get some of this around the border. And do a little simple stamping. Here and there. Uh, yeah, if you don't have a local store, which... We don't hear here either in Greenville. Uh, definitely there are stores that have online stores as well as being a brick and mortar store. So just search them out. Look in the comments here. People uh, who are here that are store owners, please post and make sure that we know who you are and that you have it. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I did a little more here maybe. And you could use two different greens to really add a lot of difference and dimension and just a different feel to it, if you like. Um, looking over here, why I have this out. I don't need this. You could do that, though. You could add that in a lighter green color. I wonder how that would look. Let's try it. Oh, maybe I did the inside. That's why I have it. Oh, okay. Well. Let's just try it. Let's just try it right here. Let's just see if we mix this in, in a lighter green. Ooh, that's kind of nice. I like that. We just don't want to get too busy. But let's go ahead and add a little. A little different green. So I'm just using my little archival inks here. This one was crushed olive for the lighter green and peeled paint for the darker green. Okay, and now we need some black. I'm going to use VersaFine, good old black. I like to use VersaFine for these really fine line stamps like this one. So this says Bloom. Make sure we get it inked up nicely. You can always do a practice off to the side if you like. And I'm just going to stamp that right there. Um, thank you, Karen. Yes, this worn wood is just the best for backgrounds and and I'm never afraid to stamp on pattern paper I've done that for years have always loved that uh, the last step that I'll do before we can get this on here is I'm going to ink my edges and I'm just using 
gathered twigs because it's a nice true brown. It's not a reddish brown. It's not a blackish brown. <laughs> it's very nice. It's my new favorite. I do like to use frayed burlap on lighter colored things, but I feel like this is pretty bold, so we can use a darker brown here. Uh, Mary's talking about where she got hers from, her store. And we will ink in here as well to really make that postage frame stand out. Um, I'm looking at what you guys are talking about. Tracy likes gathered twigs as well, it looks like. Okay, and I sent this card to Els, and I think she was trying to figure out what the heck I did uh, on hers. So that's why I felt like this was a good one to do for a demo. It would be a really nice masculine card if you switched up the flowers for something else. Um, you know, that worn wood and a little bit of leaf. That could be very masculine, I think. Oops. <laughs> Els, are you back home now? Are you officially back in Colorado? I don't know if you saw it yesterday, but I had to show Nigel on a map where South Carolina is, where Colorado is, and then where you were in Ohio. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. He, he really liked that, I think. He appreciated that, wanting to know where I was located. Okay, so we are getting ready now. We can kind of fold this in half and use it for coloring the flowers. Uh, we can get this layered up on the card base, I think. Let's do that now. And so what I did on Elsa's card, which I am not going to do today because I don't have it handy, but you know that craft foam, like the kids' sheets of thin uh, craft foam? It's about the same thickness as double-sided, you know, foam adhesive tape like this. And you can cut big sheets of it, but you have to use glue or tape or something like that to get it down. So rather than struggle with all that, I'm just going to use my foam tape on a roll and look at the comments while I'm doing this. Elle says, yes, for one day, off to California tomorrow. Spring break with the kids. Oh, they're going to Disney. How fun. That's going to be fun. And it's good weather. Disneyland. Um, Disney World down in Florida. You had to really be careful what time of year you went because it just was so hot and so busy. Uh, large store Duoding has videos. Uh, yeah, Duoding. Is that... Where is that exactly? Can somebody tell me? Is it in the Netherlands? Is it in the UK? I don't know, but I know that they're wonderful and they're a huge store. And they're a big fan of Elizabeth Crafts, of course. So you can see how much foam tape I'm using. And this is where the foam sheets might be a little more affordable. <laughs> Or even, you know, people use uh, pieces of cardboard from packaging and repurpose that, which is a great idea. I just know that when I make a card, I don't want to have it be flimsy at all or have anything caving in, especially if it's going to someone else. You know, I want to take the time to really reinforce this and make it feel solid. I'm looking to see, did anyone answer me? Do a ding. Dooding is a great shop. Where, 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 where? In the Netherlands, says Yona. Okay, thank you. And I believe, uh, is that Marloos? Or do we say Marlou? That's her shop. Okay, same thing with this piece. Bear with me. I couldn't do this ahead of time, sorry. <laughs> because I had to show you how to die cut. I could have probably had a second one ready, but you guys are kind. Uh, you like using the foam tape, the fun foam too, Linda? Yeah. It's pretty affordable. I mean, one sheet of it is like barely a dollar, if that. You can get it in all craft stores. 
Yep, you just have to use additional adhesive, you know, to put it down. Okay, I'm getting there. And then we're going to color some flowers real quick with alcohol markers as opposed to watercolors, just for speed and ease, of course. If you've been watching uh, Anita, she's been demoing with, uh, what's the name of those alcohol markers? Elle showed them once. She got some. They're kind of new and the, all the rage. Everybody's getting them. Olo or something like that. You guys tell me. Okay, so let's see. Before we get this down, because this is going to pop up here, we got to get this back there. And, you know, there's no big secret. Just make sure when you test it, it's not, you know, too far down. And we'll just get that on there with some regular old double uh, tape runner. Olo? Is that what they're called? Olo? I think you're right. I have to look into them. I really, I would love to um, test them out first. So if any of you has them and you would like to message me later with a review, <laughs> I would really appreciate that because I know that's a, that's an investment. Olo, so cool and available at Stamps and Cards, uh, says Anita. Thank you. Or parts of those boxes your craft supplies get delivered in. Yes, of course. Yep. We can repurpose for sure. And it's very lightweight. The only thing that I have found when shipping, um, mailing cards, and I have, to, I have to pull this close to me so I can see. Sorry. Uh, I want to get it just right. Okay. Uh, the one thing I have found, if you use foam tape as opposed to rigid board, it, you get charged differently and less because it's flexible. Does that make sense? If it's rigid, they consider it a package. If it's flexible and bendy, they consider it a card. And there's a big difference in the cost of mailing those two things, as I have learned. Okay, there's that. Olo has a store finder feature on their website. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I need to go somewhere and try them. Really want to test them out because as you'll see, when I'm about to color these florals, I have markers from so many different companies. I don't have like, you know, just Copics. Um, of all the different shades and colors. I have, gosh, Shinhan, I have Copic, I have whatever this one is, Master's Touch. I just have all different ones. So I just do the best that I can. Okay, where are my flowers to color? Here they are. So I have gone ahead and started to color several of the pieces just to save time. And yeah, I'm going to need to save time. So let's do one from the start, and then I will go ahead and use those ones that I had prepared. Okay, so I am just going to start with this little guy from the stemmed flowers, and I'm just going to use the lighter of my two shades of green and just very quickly uh, brush this on. And as I was saying in Create and Craft yesterday, uh, I don't... I don't tend to like color all the way in. I just like to be messy and quick. And that way you kind of fake it till you make it like, you know, the looser, the better. If you're overworking it, it looks a little, um, it just doesn't look as whimsical and soft, you know? And I kind of was inspired by Anita who was showing pictures of some pretty florals that she was coloring with those markers we were talking about when I was, doing my little demo yesterday real quick for Nigel. So there's that. That's where I would stop with that. I might do a little come up in here business. It's kind of, I think, how Anita did it. It was really pretty. So you see, I get inspired as well, like the rest of you, by so many of the design team members myself. 
So I'm going to take this a little darker green and just do the stems. And again, a whole different green from a whole different company. I don't know. I just do with what I have. And I'm going to do a few little brush strokes at the base of these leaves. Just super fast and light and easy. Uh, we tend to want to overwork things and wonder why doesn't that look good and I think that's why. Just very quick, loose, don't think about it too much. And the outcome may surprise you. It's actually very nice. So hold that up so you can see that a little closer. And then I think that we'll make these kind of a pretty peachy kind of, what do they call this? Light rouge color. And so when I designed this dye, my thinking was that it would be not just a flat color, that it would be a floral with a little dimension. So I would kind of do this, actually, like make a little wavy line here, and then leave a little gap, and then come in the top part like that. So now it looks more like you're seeing inside the flower. And this I might come up a little bit higher. Yeah, like that. So you get the idea. I'll just do that real quick and then I'll show you one that I finished over there. Looks beautiful, says Rose. Thank you. Yeah, I'm moving very quickly, but you're, you're getting the idea because we are almost out of time. Okay, so there's that pretty. Okay, so I do have some finished. Uh, I'm just going to color the tips of some of these flowers. This one I already did that you just kind of saw, but I added a little more yellow in the leaves. So let's see, I do have some purples over here I want to play with. This is probably going to be, hmm, let's see, I want this to be yellow and yellow. So let's do this Although we hardly ever see a daisy out there in purple, let's just do it. Ooh, nice and dark. Again, I'm not going to fret with, you know, a perfect line around here or going all the way out to the edge of all these. I'm just going to stroke very quickly. Um, thank you. Katie's here. Hi, Katie. Welcome. Katie Porcina is on the design team as well. I went through uh, who every, everyone is on the Annette Green design team last week when I was in the wrong place. <laughs> Let's see how this color looks in the middle. Why not? Let's just see. I'm not going to, I'm not going to color it all in hard. I'm just going to, just kind of indicate Okay, and that's where I would stop with that one. That looks sweet. All right, let's do a little yellow on these guys, and then we'll get this on the card. So this is a real pale yellow, which I'll use at the top a little. All good, it doesn't have to be a real color. That's right, I mean, look at all those V's that we made with reds and orange and black and blue, purple, doesn't matter. So just brush some light yellow here. And then I have a little darker yellow over here. We'll just kind of add that at the base here, so just softly. Because I want to get these on the card so you can see. Beautiful release. Love your project, says Sharon. Thank you so much. Uh, Margaret was very happy to see the daisy. That's fun. Okay, that's all I would do on that one. This one looks good, but I want to add a little more yellow at the base of these two, I think. Okay, and that's probably all I would do there. So, 
you saw this was the only one I did uh, like a brown twiggy thing to. It's not leaves. It can be. It certainly could be green. That's where it's completely up to you. And so if we look at this other card that I had done here, we can do it the same way and just get some of this inside for sure. I think I'll snip this a little bit shorter because, as Nigel says, it has snip ability. So we'll get that guy in there first. So we always work with what's more flat and in the background, of course. Just use a little art glitter glue very quickly to get this in place. Of course, you could have put uh, double-sided adhesive from Elizabeth Crafts on the back of these before you die cut them. And I'm going to let that guy come up forward up there, but the rest of these I'm going to push down. So that's sweet. Uh, let's see, who's next? We'll do the daisies up here. That'll be fun. And we don't have to put adhesive on some of that stuff. In fact, I think I'll grab a few little foam squares on the one I know is going to go down in that recessed area there. That'll be good. So we'll just put some adhesive on these. I thank you guys for joining me again because of the whole mix-up last week. It was a very nice little Facebook Live. It's just wrong place. So I hope you can catch it. All right, let's see. Let's just tuck that right there and let that overlap that one. That's kind of fun. And then we have these two. And now I, I wish that I had made these maybe different colors because <laughs> it's the same yellow. And you see over here how I did a little red. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little red to that one. Uh, but I think what I'll do, folks, is I will finish this up. I will say goodbye. And then I will post a picture of it all finished on the Facebook page. How's that sound? Will, I, will it be on YouTube? This time, yes, it will, because I'm in the right place. We found that when I did it in the wrong place, in a private Facebook group, there is no way to save the video and share it on YouTube. Something none of us ever knew. We did all kinds of research to try to figure out how to get that on YouTube. Just wasn't going to happen. So this one definitely will be. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'm going to finish up and have some fun and I'll post a picture and um, just had a great time. I've had an exhausting, wonderful weekend and I thank you guys all for your support in my new release and for watching today. So I will see you next time. Take care.